Well, after a series of delays, NASA will try again to put the space shuttle Discovery into orbit. This morning marks the sixth rescheduling for Discovery astronauts. The mission, originally set for mid-July, was postponed for a number of reasons, including equipment problems and a meteor shower. During the mission, astronauts will release two satellites and conduct a spacewalk. CNN will bring you live coverage of Discovery's launch beginning at 7.45 a.m. Eastern. Astronauts have been waiting for their mission to get into space for months now. The last series of tries in July unsuccessful because of equipment failure and a lot of other worries. Right now, we're going to go to John Holloman, who has been watching all this. He is covering the story for on. There has been some concern that uh, maybe one of the major problems this morning would be the weather. That's right, Ralph. And um, at this point, in fact, in the past couple of minutes, uh, NASA weather forecasters and Air Force reconnaissance planes flying around through the Florida weather today say that a big thunderstorm, which was sighted about 20 miles away from the launch pad, about 45 minutes ago is beginning to dissipate, which is good news. Uh, they're saying that as of right now, the weather situation at launch time will probably be about 70% go. They were saying 40% uh, go uh, just about 30 minutes ago, so things are improving. There's some fog in Orlando right now. If that fog will stay in Orlando and not move toward the launch pad, everything should be okay. But uh, as you point out, this mission has been delayed time and time again. There was some worry about a major meteor shower, worry that transistors on the biggest satellite in the cargo bay might have been faulty. The astronauts got up more than four hours ago and put on their orange launch the shuttle suits. The astronauts are uh, now ready to go in that. They have their re suits on in preparation for this morning's attempt. We haven't heard anything from them since they arrived last Thursday. And then Commander Frank Culbertson was trying to look forward rather than back at all the delays. So here we are again. We're glad to see you all again, and we appreciate you coming out. Uh, we're really excited to be back in Florida. It's been a, a long break. We've done a lot of training, and uh, really haven't changed anything on the mission. We've just gotten ready again and started building up, and been with our flight control team and our trainers, and they're all primed and ready to go. About three hours ago, the crew left their quarantine quarters and boarded them for the short trip to launch pad 39B, looking pretty excited about the prospect for a successful launch. Commander Frank Culbertson and his four-person crew have completed all their pre-launch operations. This is what Culbertson looked like as he got ready to enter the shuttle a couple of hours ago. During this mission, the Discovery crew has three main jobs. First, they will launch the latest thing in communications satellites. The advanced communications satellite, some things the satellite which is bringing CNN to your home right now can't. It'll be able to pinpoint a signal to a specific small area on the ground, and it uses a new communications band different from those by current satellites. After that, which could take place today, the crew will kick an ultraviolet telescope out of the cargo bay. It'll fly a few miles away from Discovery for about a week, taking pictures of gas clouds between the stars. Late in the week, two astronauts are planning to make a six-hour spacewalk, testing tools, which NASA wants to use in December, to fix the out-of-focus Hubble Space Telescope. If the weather and the equipment continues to cooperate, Discovery will lift off at 45 minutes after this hour on its nine-day mission. Ralph? The following is CNN's coverage of a live event. Good morning. I'm Ralph Wenge at CNN Center in Atlanta. For months now, NASA has been trying to get Discovery into the air, and for a variety of reasons so far, it simply hasn't worked. Now, this morning, they're going to try it once again. And following this story, CNN's John Holloman. John, good morning. Ralph, good morning to you. The Discovery astronauts have been waiting for this day for years. The crew calls this its fourth try. The mission's been delayed more times than any shuttle mission since the Columbia mission, which went up just for the Challenger disaster back in January of 1986. If you look uh, at your set now, you'll see uh, Launch Complex 39B. There's Discovery on the pad. About an hour ago, the blue sky that was behind the space shuttle wasn't blue at all. There were some thick clouds there. There was even a thunderstorm out over the Atlantic that was moving toward the Kennedy Space Center. But uh, it's, um, it's not there anymore. It's dissipated. You can see there the uh, main engines are uh, prepared at the bottom of Discovery to do their business in about, um, oh, 50 seconds from right now. And um, the crew is upstairs in the, in the cockpit on the flight deck now, preparing for the last minute launch of Discovery. We'll see what happens at this point. Equipment-wise, everything seems to be working perfectly. There you see the, the uh, base of the two huge solid rocket boosters that will be lighted after the three main engines are uh, all checked out and working perfectly. We have about... 20, um, 25 seconds to go, and we'll listen to the last few seconds of the countdown. Hydraulic power units activated. Sound suppressor system activated. Launch ignition system on. T minus 10. 
nine, eight, seven, six. Go for main engine start. Engines are up and burning. Two, one, zero, and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery, launching the next generation of communication satellite technology. Houston now controlling. Houston Discovery, roll, please. Roger, roll, Discovery. Roll maneuver complete. Discovery's in a heads-down position on course for a 28.5 degree, 160 nautical mile orbit. Discovery's engines now throttling down as the orbiter pushes through the area of maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle in the lower atmosphere. The orbiter is one mile downrange from the launch site. Altitude 21,000 feet. Engines now beginning to throttle back up. Discovery, go at throttle up. Discovery's three main engines back at full throttle. The orbiter is seven miles from the launch site. Altitude 66,000 feet, traveling 2,500 feet per second, or about 1,700 miles per hour. The time is one minute, 35 seconds in flight. The next event is burnout and separation of the twin solid rocket boosters. I'm sure you could hear excitement in the voices of everybody at the Kennedy Space Center and uh, even those astronauts aboard Discovery as they announced the launch. There, there's a big sigh of relief for everybody. The two giant solid rocket boosters have separated from Discovery and are now going into orbit using the power from three main engines. The most dangerous part of the flight, as the astronauts will tell you, just ended. And uh, um, it'll be another probably six minutes before it gets into orbit, uh, about 159 miles above the Earth. This mission has three main goals. Later today, the crew wants to launch a new state-of-the-art communication satellite, which will do a lot of things that current communication satellites just can't do. Using much higher frequencies, it'll be able to send information back to Earth much faster than the satellite that we use to send CNN to you. After that, tomorrow, in fact, a German-built telescope will fly within a few miles of discovery, taking pictures of some gas clouds, which are located out between some of the stars in, uh, in this and other solar systems. If, uh, if that experiment is successful about six days from now, this, this satellite that will fly almost alongside the shuttle will be uh, filled back in by the astronauts. They'll put it back in the car day and bring it home. And late in the week, Carl Walls and Jim Newman, two of the astronauts, will take a six-hour spacewalk, the first one in a while, to check some of the tools which will be used to repair the out-of-focus Hubble Space Telescope. Um, uh, there's, NASA is still hoping that uh, scheduling delays won't prevent that mission taking place sometime in the month of December. And uh, so far, from what we can hear and what we can see here on CNN Live, the Discovery launch is, uh, is just about picture perfect. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do, according to everything that uh, the NASA controllers are telling us. And uh, it's a remarkable event. NASA's Bruce Buckingham uh, provided the space agency commentary on this launch. And after so many delays, Ralph, you could see the, you could hear the excitement in Buckingham's launch. He almost uh, screamed that the, uh, the launch and the liftoff was successful. And uh, after, as I say, months and months of delay, everybody at NASA must be in, feeling pretty good today. Ralph? Good morning. The Space Shuttle Discovery now heading into orbit above Earth. Seems John Holloman has been following the preparations and the launch. Ralph, an amazing story today. You know, there have been numerous delays. There have even been three launch aborts on mission, but moments ago, as you pointed out, the Space Shuttle Discovery was able to roar into orbit above the Earth. It achieved it about seven minutes ago. Um, the last time the crew was ready for launch, a sensor failure caused the main engines to shut down before the solid rockets were fired, but nothing like that happened today. Let's take a look at the last few seconds of the countdown. One zero and liftoff of the spatial discovery launching the next generation of communication satellite technology 
The first main order of business after setting up housekeeping aboard Discovery is to launch a new generation communication satellite. The acronym is ACTS, A-C-T-S. This satellite will do things that uh, current communication satellites just won't do. It has a, a more high-powered transmitter. It operates higher frequency range. It'll be able to uh, pinpoint a satellite transmission, not for the entire United States, but for a specific point on the ground something that uh, more wide-ranging satellites can't do. It's going to be used by uh, communications companies, cellular phone companies may be willing to use this. Some, uh, some television news operations, including this one perhaps, might be able to use it to get transmissions parts of the world where we have more difficulty in operating right now. That satellite is scheduled to be kicked out of the shuttle's cargo bay about six hours from now. And the astronauts will uh, park beside it for about an hour, making sure everything is working well. And then uh, tomorrow or the next day, it will uh, fire itself an attached rocket motor up into orbit about 22,000 miles above the Earth. Also tomorrow, a German-built um, special telescope will be uh, launched from the cargo bay, and it will float between 6 and 20 miles from Discovery for uh, six days of this mission. We'll look at gas clouds between stars. Then uh, probably on Thursday or Friday, two of the astronauts will take a spacewalk, which will last them about six hours. It'll be the time... We have seen a couple of astronauts floating in space or working out in the shuttle cargo bay for many, many months. What they'll be doing on that part of the mission is testing some tools. Spacewalking astronauts will have to use, maybe in December, now scheduled for December, as uh, another shuttle crew attempts to repair some of the problems on that out-of-focus full space telescope, which is floating in a, a very similar orbit shuttle. Ralph?